Start the meeting for Monday, September 17th, 2018. Uh, first order of business is to approve the agenda, and I would entertain a motion for that. Make that motion. I'll second that. Any discussion or changes for the agenda that we need to have? <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, all in favor of approving the agenda as presented, please say aye. 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 Consent agenda items. The minutes of the September 4th meeting. I'll uh, entertain a motion to uh, accept the consent agenda items. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Public. Time for the public. Any member of the public for commentary tonight? All right. There being none, Tracy. <laughs> Hi there. Uh, uh, could we have you move up to this seat here, sure. Tracy, and uh, we'll try to get you set up with the microphone. Okay, so um, uh, Tracy, you've uh, indicated interest in being a uh, member of the Conservation Commission. Um, and from the perspective of the board, we'd just like to know a little bit about you and, and what brought you to our doorstep. Um, about the commission or yeah. Waterbury residents? No, the commission. What, uh, what, what is your interest in that? What's your background? How does that, that all fit together? Waterbury property, Sarah Lee's property, <laughs> about uh, a year and a half ago. And I wanted to get involved in the town in some way. And I was looking around at different committees and um, went to a couple and went to that one in particular. And I Raise awareness within the town. Um, work with folks in the town about their various projects. That um, some smart biology funding uh, for committed people that um, organize. So th those are some of the reasons why. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm not a biologist, uh, but I certainly am not a I have skills that I think are good within the community. We've done a lot of community work in the VA, know how to manage groups, and I'm I think the clinical skills that you learn working with homeless veterans, you can also work in any group in any committee to help smooth things and find some common ground. Good, good. Um, <clears throat> any questions for Tracy from the board? No. Okay. Well, we certainly appreciate your interest in uh, in joining in the uh, in the town's endeavors like that, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, welcome to the community and welcome. I suppose we, we uh, will make the motion and go through that process. Okay, Mark. Remind me your name again. Tracy. 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 Smith. I will make a motion to appoint, is there a time frame on this? I forgot to look it up, but I can okay. fill it in. <clears throat> um, to we'll appoint Tracy Sweeney to the Conservation Commission for the said amount of time. I'd second that. 
All right. Any further discussion on the nomination? There being none, um, all in favor of appointing Tracy Sweeney to the Conservation Commission for the term to be determined here, uh, please say aye. 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 Very good. Welcome. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. Thank you. Probably the, hopefully more to come with other involvement. <laughs> yes. It's a start. Thank you. Welcome to the community. Yes. Great community. Thanks. Thanks. I'll let you know what that term is. Okay. Most of these are, are generally two-year sort of so terms. What is it? Commissions are four. Four. So, so the remainder of Megan's term, I, I don't recall what that is. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. um, oh wait, I can tell you a minute. Mm. Two thousand nineteen. So just one year, and then you, you can be reappointed for another four year. Okay. Okay. So not even the year the next. Yeah. It'll be say, April thirtieth, two thousand nineteen. Okay. Great. All right. Managers' items. Yes, sir. Um, at your places or distributed to by email. Uh, there's a draft. Um, it's headed current policy and then proposed policy. Uh, and attached to it is a copy of uh, Section 5 of 32 BSA. And this, this deals with uh, tax bills and their confidentiality or not. Um, a number of years ago, there was uh, issues raised in the Vermont legal community and throughout municipalities from uh, folks wanting to get information on tax bills. Uh, typically, the people looking for information are um, you know, escrow agents or attorneys that are working for somebody either buying or selling a property. And there was some gray area uh, when we um, Act 68 came into play and the, uh, what used to be prebates that were sent directly to <coughs> homeowners for their property tax relief were turned into state payments uh, that credited your bill. So even though it would be very difficult, um, <coughs> some suggest that you might be able to figure out somebody's income by looking at their property tax bill, the value of their property, and then whatever state payment you receive. <coughs> So the legislature clarified a couple years later that these tax bills, the information regarding the, um, if a tax bill has a credit on it, it becomes a confidential tax bill. <clears throat> so in response to that, a number of years ago, we, um, well, actually, in response to the fact that they were confidential or the argument they were confidential, we passed a policy that basically said you could come to the office and get your own tax bill or we would mail it to you. <clears throat> we would not provide it to your attorney. We would not provide it to um, an escrow agent. And so the current policy on the front page <clears throat> is what we live by now. And um, for a variety of reasons, customer service, I think, highest among the reasons, we're asking that we change the policy. Um, what happens now if an escrow agent calls and they want a copy of your tax bill so that they can make sure they pay it on time, we tell them that we can't send it to them, that the taxpayer has to come in. And the taxpayer will come in. We end up making a photocopy of it, giving it to that person. That person faxes it or emails it to the escrow agent. Um, we do all that work anyway, but we're making it very inconvenient for the taxpayer. So what we propose is uh, we will still not provide the information by phone. Uh, if we get a request in writing, and that could be an email, um, <clears throat> stating that they are the um, one of these um, authorized personnel that we will then, uh, for $2 a parcel, 
send that information out. And it's important, the $2 per parcel is, and Carolyn may know the name of the company, but you know we get escrow companies that call and they want 150 tax bills, and it does take time to process those. So uh, we're asking that you allow us to do this. Um, I think it will make our residents and taxpayers happier because they won't have to come down here to get them. They can just be sent to the people that need them. Uh, there have been times where, you know, people are on vacation in Florida and their tax accountant is wanting this information and they call up and say, our policy is we can mail it to your home address. And if they're in Florida, that doesn't really help them too much. So I think this will be uh, much more helpful to the uh, taxpayer and it will, uh, the burden won't be any different on us except we'll get paid for a little bit of time. <coughs> There'll be no charge to property owners. <coughs> right. So if you come in looking for your own bill to do it yourself, we'll just photocopy and give it to you. So. It, is that stated anywhere other than just practice? No, but we can add it. Because that's that, that was my only question with this. Um, well, in the in the original policy, uh, policy you've got uh, it, it's basically addressed to the property owner, and in the proposed one, uh, the property owner is not listed there. I think we can add it. So, yeah, with that addition, yeah. that that covers that and and also deals with the fee. We are one of the very few municipalities, evidently, who have such a draconian policy. <clears throat> I mean, Carla has looked. They're pretty, most municipalities are pretty tight, but this is like zero customer service. Mm. Right. Um, do you need a motion to adopt the proposed policy? Yeah, with your additional language that will insert. Is, is it still available that you can look up tax bills on that online? Yes. Is that something Which is that? where we direct escrow agents and real estate people. It's the redacted copy. It doesn't have, obviously, it doesn't have state credit on them. But that doesn't limit who can access those bills. But this would right. be a limit of who can access the counter. Huh? Um, we're, we're limiting who is allowed to access that information at the counter. Yeah, if happen? you come in and ask for my tax bill and yeah. you can't see it, you could go to the, online could do you it. could go online and see it, but Gross. the information about my tax, but my state payment and the net tax the won't be there. Okay. Right. I'd make a motion that we allow um, Bill to put into force the proposed policy. I'll As second. Written, but with the change of your language. <laughs> yes. I'll second. All right. Any further discussion on the issue? There being none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Good. Got that. The police report is under manager's items, but you can take it if you'd like, Mark. I know. Mm -hmm. um, no. I sh What's that? Sorry. <laughs> Okay, um, we were discussing it a little bit earlier and um, when when Mark arrived. I have not had the opportunity to uh, transfer this over into the uh, the, the graph form. Um, however, you can you can see from um, the uh, report here uh, more activity by the Waterbury troopers that that shift occurred that uh, we anticipated where. Uh, the number of calls handled by the uh, uh, resident troopers uh, compared to the calls handled by the Middlesex troopers has, um, has shifted to that, that balance that we were actually looking to see. Um, we did have uh, some discussion earlier about the, uh, the increase in, in the enforcement activities. Um, it appears to be uh, a very smooth transition uh, as they become a presence in the community, the first month was uh, more getting folks acclimated to the new presence being available, and uh, now the activity level is is beginning to uh, to shape itself up. Um, the uh, 
out of out of district calls, we're we're limited to one uh, assistance on a fatal motor vehicle crash. Um, but of note, the um, community-based activities they did they they uh, had a presence at the Waterbury Car Show, and they also adjusted. Uh, the workday hours for the first day of school to have a presence around, um, which was something that we had expressed as a uh, matter of interest for us, and they were more than willing to do that. Um, in addition, Bill, did you want to um, mention the uh, the discussion regarding Cross It Brook? Yeah, um, I think you all remember when we entered into the agreement. <clears throat> Um, and we talked about schools. Uh, I did tell Lieutenant White that um, even though Crossfit Brook is in Duxbury, uh, there are Waterbury children that go to that school, and I didn't think we would have a problem if they would pay attention from time to time to that area. Um, Rick Ostrom, the daytime trooper, was in to see me while well, he brought this to me uh, early last week, and then he was in on another occasion. Um, and I asked him about that. He'd been over there a couple of different times. I noticed on Front Porch Forum one day last week, someone wrote in expressing concerns about people doing Carla's favorite move, passing on the right. Uh, she chastised me for that one. Um, <laughs> by me. Anyway, uh, uh, as, as people are waiting to turn left into the Cross of Brook School from Route 100, a number of people from the through traffic were going by in the breakdown lane on the right-hand side, and they just, you know, asked people to to pay attention. They didn't know if it was illegal, so I forwarded that front porch forum comment on to Lieutenant White and said, you know, this is an example. Uh, he got back to Mark and me on Friday, I think, and indicated that he had um, passed this information along to both troopers and that they would uh, pay attention to that. From my perspective, um, this is working out very well. Um, uh, the daytime trooper, uh, I've, I see him fairly regularly. Uh, he comes in. I had occasion to call him on an issue last week. He came right in. He dealt with it, got back to me later in the day. So I think there's good communication between uh, staff and, uh, and the troopers out there. Uh, according to Rick, um, there's a lot of interaction between the public and, and the troopers. He reports that Joe, who's the afternoon, nighttime guy, uh, has the same experience, that people are very willing to you know, flag them down, call them, interact with them. So um, I've heard no complaints about the service. Uh, what little I've heard is good. Most of what I hear is from the troopers themselves. So. Uh, it seems to be going well. Uh, if you didn't notice it, it's right on the on the second page. Um, about 44 percent of the tickets that have been issued were issued under municipal ordinance, which means once they filter through the system and if they are actually paid, the money or a portion thereof will come to us. For every traffic ticket, if you get a hundred dollar ticket for speeding. Uh, the state takes, I don't know, $26 or something right off the top for an administrative fee, and then you get the rest. The only thing that we would get tickets revenue for would be for speed violations, um, maybe stop signs. Stop signs. Yeah. Uh, but crosswalk violations, uh, defective equipment, careless and negligent operation, those are all state statutes and the money, no matter which, even if we had a, you know, if the Montpelier police officer writes that kind of ticket, it still goes to the state. Mm -hmm. So, But they are writing tickets on our uh, ordinance, which is good. Um, I don't believe we have received any revenue yet. It takes months for that <laughs> stuff to uh, cycle through the system. So. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow night is the uh, uh, meeting of the community advisory board for the state police. Um, our, our feedback on this project is one of the uh, high points of interest for that group as well. Um, and uh, from what I've seen, uh, the presence throughout the community is, is the most noteworthy thing uh, that I've, I've seen. It's, uh, it's town-wide. Um, 
You see them uh, patrolling the uh, areas throughout the town as well as down here in the village and any given point in time, uh, you can encounter them. Uh, when we have calls for service, uh, as noted in the report, and it was pretty consistent from uh, last month to this month, uh, the response time is, is usually anywhere from a minute to 15 minutes. Uh, and that was really one of the strong things that we wanted to try to uh, be able to uh, uh, create with this presence was uh, just reduce the lag time for community response. And uh, they've been dealing with, uh, with uh, general interest complaints. Um, because they are here in the community, they're able to take uh, a much more intensive approach to, to being part of the community, and that seems to be working well. Yeah, I agree. I think everything I, I've read and what I've heard is positive, and I, the only question I do have, if we are sending them over into Duxbury, do we need to involve them in any way, the town? And how does that work when they're under our contract? Involve the town of Duxbury? Yeah, I don't know. Like, once, if they're, if they're working under our ordinances over here, they're under a contract to... Well, that would be under state auspices. So now they go over there, they're just... Yep. Okay. Uh, Duxbury is covered by the state police out of Middlesex. Um, and uh, this uh, particular area is an area where quite often in the past when the village PD was here, things would happen there. Um, uh, the village would slide over and... Yeah. and I didn't know how that worked. That's yeah. no problem. Yeah. If, if no, they, it's pretty much seamless. If they write a ticket over there, it's going to be on the Route 100 State Highway. You know, there'll be no yeah. revenue coming here. And, you know, it's more the, uh, the idea of writing a ticket over there is really not the, the idea of it. Um, when I first mentioned to the lieutenant and then to uh, Trooper Ostrom that, you know, just going over there and, and going into the school and I, I don't think Duxbury would have any issues with, with that, but it's all working well from our perspective. And if I remember the contract right, they should be sending us a bill soon, right? It's uh, after quarterly. the quarter ends, right? right. So July, yep. August, September. Because September. Yep. Okay. we haven't paid anything yet. So. <laughs> Yes, Herschel. Uh, where's the mic? Herschel Murray, uh, Watergrave. Uh, you start talking about this, it reminds me, and it's been on kind of short notice, but we're having the, the bike and walk to school from Rusty Spanger on Wednesday morning, and in some of the emails that have flown back and forth, someone raised the question, uh, do we need to notify some police, uh, something because of, you know, the, the street up to Thatcher Road is going to be crowded. And so my question is, do we and who? When is it? It's going to be Wednesday morning. This I, week? Uh, are they going to be primarily on the sidewalk? They're not going to be out in the street, are they? I, yeah, Usually they're going to be out on the street because they're riding their bikes. Ah, uh, yes. And, and they all go up once. I've, I've worked the thing several times, yeah. but down there where you're handing out the, the, the goodies, and that's why all of a sudden the kids start departing after they announce gather over here, and then they take off. And I'm busy trying to clean up, so I don't know what happens. There's, there's two routes, um, one of which goes up Railroad Street mm -hmm. and yeah. then just makes the turn to Thatcher Brook, but there's also another uh, group goes that goes it. to cross it. And so they go up and make the turn by Snowfire. All right. right. And so, so, they're, so they're gathering places at Rusty Park. Right. Everybody Park. meets at Rusty Park. And then they walk or ride to school right. from there. Yeah. yeah. So uh, what time? About 8 o'clock in the morning? It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's around 8. They call the CrossFit kids first. And, and then they, uh, Tom uh, leads them. Thursday. Drake. Yeah, uh, Drake. over there. Tom and, Drake, uh, the principal. Drake and, yeah. and, uh, and they also say, well, if you're, if you're walking, you need to leave now. Or if you're biking, you know, five minutes later. 
So, but I, I've never been involved on in that end of it. Yeah. What happens is all of a sudden they're all gone and we got to clean it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All the dogs well, are gone. We'll just uh, make them aware of that. that uh, uh, Rick should be on regular duty with that anyway and just being aware of yeah. uh, yeah. the kids. And Probably the be so. okay. best yeah. just to have him contact Tom Drake yeah. and uh, Denise Goodenow at uh, Thatcher Park directly. <clears throat> discussion of generator. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so in the budget this year, in the uh, fund 76, which is the municipal building operating fund, um, we <clears throat> include uh, $100,000 in there for new equipment. And um, I believe uh, about $20,000 of that new equipment is a new uh, server and computer equipment for the building that we'll need to put in probably before the year ends. And then the balance is mainly a generator. Um, and I can't remember if the generator was 80 and the server was 20 or if the generator was 75 and the server and something else. I didn't dig out the detail of the, uh, of, the, of the budget. If you need that, I can go get it. Um, the board directed uh, the installation of a generator here at this building in order to uh, harden it, armor it against um, loss of power for extended period of time so the building could, could function. Um, I talked with Barb. We applied for a hazard mitigation grant or, or another grant from, uh, I think it was a hazard mitigation grant. Anyway, we, we applied for a grant from the state of Vermont, uh, as did many other communities. Uh, as far as I know, none of the generator grants were funded. Um, it wasn't a high priority for the state to, to dole out grant money for that. So the budget did not include any um, grant funding. There was nothing. So we, we budgeted the expense, but nothing for the grant. The grant didn't come through. Um, so Bill Woodruff has been working with Brookfield Service, and uh, they've made a proposal finally. It's not as easy to find a place here to get a generator, but the cost of the generator, uh, even though they've been hit with tariffs now, Brookfield Service will honor the price that they gave us earlier in the year, $71,595. Uh, that would be a 100 kW diesel engine, turbocharged, six-cylinder generator. There's a 10-week lead time on the generator, six weeks on the automatic transfer switch. Um, the generator will have to be located on a concrete pad to elevate it up above the flood water level, and more than likely its location will be kind of in the back of the front building, the, mm -hmm. the Jane's building, outside my office window near the cedar trees back there. Um, so if we're going to do it, that's more than likely where it has to go. And, uh, you know, it will be a little bit more visible to Main Street than I wish it were. Um, I suppose we can screen it down the line if we have to. I did talk to Dina briefly uh, on Friday after Bill gave me this information. Um, I don't think anything is necessary as far as um, may require a zoning permit, but she doesn't believe it has to go to the DRB. Uh, if it does, we'll do it. So my, my question is, is the board still on board with doing this or not? Is the 71.5 including, are they installing that pad? Are they? Yeah, that's all, that's all inclusive. And the connection to the panel and all, everything? Uh, yeah, I believe that's everything, Mark. Um, there's always some incidental things that come up, but I believe this is an installed price, including the pad. And if it's not, I'll let you know. Mm -hmm. But I, I asked Bill last week, and I'm almost certain it is. 
You know, we have a generator. It would be, it would look like what's outside the fire station mm -hmm. here. If you go in the back of the yeah. fire station, it's elevated up on that pad. Um, you know, we hope we'd never need it. If you remember, we had a problem l last winter with, uh, we had some freeze up mm -hmm. stuff here and things weren't working right with the heat pumps. And uh, we got a little concerned saying, wow, if we lost power for any significant period of time. So anyway, that's what the deal is. It's not cheap and there's no money to do it except our own, so. Mm -hmm. what, what was that grant total, I'm sorry? There is no grant. I know, but what was the one that we were, what was the application? I think grant? it would have been. Uh, um, was it HMGP money? Uh, yeah, I think it was 80%, but I don't. I, yeah, 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 I think, I think that's about what it was. So, um, uh, the board has already previously approved going ahead with this. We put it in the budget. Yeah. Um, you know, and, I didn't, you know, uh, and we're Nat within the parameters of the, of the budgeted items. Yeah, this um, Fund 76 is a municipal building operating budget. Um, we ended last year with a, about a $50,000 deficit. Um, we're, we're transferring into this um, budget the leftover money from the construction job mm -hmm. fund 80 there's about ninety three thousand five hundred dollars that's coming into this fund and without the generator I mean with the generator at a hundred thousand it shows that we'll end up with the same forty nine thousand dollar deficit that we had at the beginning of the year but if the generator is only seventy one or seventy two thousand dollars that's twenty eight thousand mm -hmm. dollars or so some of these other line items may or may not be as high as they're budgeted. It's, you know, if we end up with a s slight uh, deficit in this fund, it, it's not a killing matter. We will carry it forward and eventually we'll catch up to it. But um, I, the deficit will not be as much as projected here because we have a projected expense of, well, actually, the 100000 isn't all for the generator. That's for the server as well. So we'll probably be in that same in that Ballpark. same range. Do you need any sort of motion from us with that? Uh, uh, since it's in the budget? Yeah. Um, I, I think you should make a motion to do it just because you also agreed to apply for the grant money. Mm -hmm. And now I'm telling you we didn't get it. So just to kind of confirm everything, we'll have new auditors coming. So. What, um, what's your feeling on that grant and the uh, possibility of us if we were to reapply next year? Is that a yearly? I mean, I know it's, you never know with grants, but I'm just wondering. Yeah, um, we could, we can apply again. Uh, as far as I knew, n you know, no one else who applied for generators got one. Um, Barb isn't here, so I can't confirm that right now. Um, you know, if, We've been here since January 2016 and haven't needed the generator yet. So, uh, you know, are we going to, is it going to be a killing matter if we don't do it? Um, no, but the, the it's board. It's insurance policy, basically. Yeah. It, it is, and um, uh, given any sort of extended outage and uh, the need to use the building uh, during that period of time, I, I think that's what, drove the initial discussion about um, identifying that. And the hope was that we would be able to find some grant funding to defray that, but it sounds like that's, that's gone by the wayside for now. Um, and if you make the motion to, to go forward with it, you know, I can have a conversation with Barb, and if she really thinks, oh man, we should just reapply next year, and they already told us we'll get it, I can delay it for that reason. but. Because we budgeted it and then we authorized the grant application, I, I'd just like a formal motion to do it. And if uh, if there's a reason not to, I'll come back to you. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to get going if we're yeah, going to do it. Fine with that. You comfortable with that? Yep. Okay. Um, well, I will entertain a motion to um, uh, authorize Bill to go ahead with um, uh, uh, 
procurement of a generator um, as outlined in his description and as provided for in the uh, uh, budget as approved at town meeting. So moved. Second? Second. Any further discussion with that point? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Good. Columbus Day holiday. Yeah, um, this is a little bit of a out of the box thinking. The town provides uh, its employees with 10 paid holidays a year. Um, I don't have to go, I, I can recite them all for you if you need to. But um, <clears throat> Columbus Day is, uh, is a holiday uh, that we still get. We still call it Columbus Day here, and that's October 8th. Um, and uh, years ago, we used to get Veterans Day in November as well. Uh, and as time went on, probably 25 years ago, uh, people in the, in the organization said, you know, uh, we get a holiday on Columbus Day. Uh, we have Thanksgiving in November. Um, instead of having Veterans Day, could we work Veterans Day and have the day after Thanksgiving off to give us a four-day weekend? And the boards allowed that to happen. Um, one of the holidays, a day that is not a holiday for us is Christmas Eve. And I'm not asking for a permanent change, but Christmas is on a Tuesday this year. So that means Christmas, is a mon Christmas Eve is a Monday. And um, I end up sending people home early. Uh, we have no foot traffic to speak of on Christmas Eve at all. So I'm wondering if for this year only, the board would be receptive to allowing us to work Columbus Day, uh, which most of the rest of the world works except for the post office and banks, mm -hmm. um, to allow us to work Columbus Day and take uh, Christmas Eve off. Um, I know for the office staff, uh, the likelihood that we'll be doing work and that there will be people here uh, will be much higher on Columbus Day than on Christmas Eve. As I said, on Christmas Eve, there's nobody's going to come in Christmas Eve. Uh, and we end up, you know, uh, Carla, uh, you know, she's uh, her own boss. If she decides, well, it's Christmas Eve and she wants to leave early, she has to feel guilty that she's asking Beth to stay until 4.30. And so um, I think it would be better if we allowed this to happen. I also think that I haven't talked to the folks um, in the highway department, but the likelihood if it snows, they're going to have to work Christmas Eve, whether we have the day off or not. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if they work Columbus Day and cross their fingers that it doesn't snow on Christmas Eve, we actually get a productive day because you can do more work outside on the road system on Columbus Day. So I'm sure we're not going to be paving on Christmas Eve? <laughs> I'm sure we're not going to be paving on Christmas Eve. Maybe Kabricki will be, but <laughs> we won't be. Um, so I, I would motion. like to make it clear that I'm not, I'm not suggesting that we do the same thing for the week later, New Year's Eve. You know, that's a, a whole different kind of deal. Okay. Uh, so but, the motion you would be looking for would be for uh, 2018 only, uh, the exchange of the Columbus Day holiday uh, with uh, uh, being able to provide Christmas Eve as that holiday off. Yes. And water, wastewater, and highways, it, it, they can take either? Well, they don't have anything to do with water oh. and wastewater. Right, right, right. Um, I guess, you know, if the highway crew decided, oh, no, we want Columbus Day off because we want to go uh, hunting, you know, yeah, uh, you would like hunting that flexibility. Whatever, we can let them deal with it that way. But, uh, okay. all right. Um, is there a motion to that effect? I'll make that motion. Second? I'll second. Any further clarification on that? Do you think anyone has any kind of scheduled plans to leave since it's so close to the 8th? 
Uh, there are people that do, that I know of, but they can take a vacation day. Okay. They're, they're not going to have a holiday taken away from them, you know. Um, sure. So. Good. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Yeah. Any opposed? No. Good. Um, annual audit. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> this is just a... Uh, uh, asking you to update what we did before. When I presented the information about the audit to you back several meetings ago, uh, what I said was, um, you know, it's significantly higher priced than it was before. Uh, starts at $22,000 in 2017. Stays that, I mean, for the 17 year. Mm -hmm. So this year, and the first two audits would be 22,000, it goes to 22.7, 23.3, and 24. And what I suggested was perhaps we um, can just do this, and because we only had one proposal to re advertise next spring. Um, when I get back to Sullivan and Powers, and I didn't even ask them about that. I called them back and said, we've accepted your proposal. Let's schedule a date. And I thought we'd be already doing it. And they said, well, we almost didn't uh, submit a proposal because, you know, we're booked. So we'll probably be there around Thanksgiving. So if we have to wait until Thanksgiving to do this, and then you have to ramp up, and you, it takes a lot of work to go from one auditor to another because they're going to want to look at the last mm -hmm. audits. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't think it makes sense to bother with next year trying to put this out again because they would like to do our audits in March or April rather than the June-July time frame that Yacoboni did it. So they'll be here in November, then they're going to come right back. I also talked to Bill Yacoboni and uh, talked about the price, and he, he told me he thought that the prices that we got would be higher. So he said, it's not a bad price. I would just stick with them. They're a good firm. So uh, you don't really have to make any motions, but um, unless you don't want me to do what I just told you I'm going to do, I think we'll just stick with them through this five-year term as is, and we'll go from there. Sounds like the proposal was reasonable, and the, the problem was just the, the initial scheduling. And once we fall in as a regular client, uh, that should smooth up. Yeah. Good. Sounds fine to me. Thanks. All right. So we are at the end of our agenda. Make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. All in favor of adjournment, please say aye. Aye. All right. Thank you all.